Should famine be declared in Somalia? For months now, the United Nations and aid agencies have warned of extreme hunger and malnutrition on a catastrophic scale. So what's preventing an official announcement and would it make a difference on the ground? This is Inside Story. Hello there and welcome to the program. I'm Nastasia Tay. Somalia is facing full-blown famine. It's at the country's doorstep. Humanitarian agencies have been issuing warnings like that for months. UNICEF says conditions are worse now than during the last famine back in 2011, but no one has yet made an official declaration. The numbers, though, are stark. The World Food Programme says 7.1 million people, that's nearly half the population, face acute food insecurity. That's when lives or livelihoods are in immediate danger because there simply isn't enough food. 1.5 million children are malnourished. Four failed rainy seasons have led to the worst drought now in 40 years. And Russia's invasion of Ukraine has made staples such as grains and cooking oil unaffordable. Millions of people have been displaced. I came to Baidoa on the 2nd of October, and I do not know anyone from this town. Two of my children died here, and the surviving ones are hungry. My family does not have anything to eat, and I don't have the relatives to help me. In the last two weeks, we've come across parents who have lost their children to hunger and drought. The drought is worse than the previous ones. People have reached here from far places and their problem is that they are new to the area and do not have relatives to assist them. Well, Somalia's president was asked about the drought and mass hunger at a forum in Washington, D.C. in September. Here's what he had to say. We are in a famine prevention stage right now. And uh, yes, it is a bit difficult, but it's working. In certain geographic locations of Somalia, the risk is very high to announce a famine. Announcing famine or declaring famine itself is a very difficult situation. That does not affect the, the famine victims only, but halts the development, it changes the perspectives and everything. Well, a famine is the most severe kind of hunger crisis, but it's also a technical term. The phases of food insecurity are carefully defined and classified within a framework known as the IPC. Famine occurs when 20% of households face extreme food shortages, 30% of children suffer from acute malnutrition, and two of every 10,000 people die from starvation or disease and malnutrition. The declaration is made by several parties, primarily the government and various UN agencies. Famine can be caused by multiple factors, including conflict and extreme weather patterns. With early warning and rapid action, though, it can be prevented. The last famine declared in Somalia was back in 2011. At least 260,000 people died. Well, let's now bring in our guests. In Mogadishu, we have Guhad Adan. He's a research associate at the London School of Economics. He's also an aid practitioner and a humanitarian specialist on Somalia. In Edmonton, Canada, is Afiare Elmi. He's an author and the executive director of the Heritage Institute for Policy Studies, a Somali think tank. And also in Mogadishu is Horan Ali. She's advisor to the mayor of Mogadishu. A warm welcome to you all. Thank you so much for joining us here on Inside Story. Um, Afiare, I'll start with you because you've been looking broadly at the situation in Somalia. And, and I'm curious about what the situation is on the ground right at this moment. Are we experiencing famine conditions in Somalia? And it just hasn't been officially declared yet. Uh, thank you very much. And I want to say hi to, to the other guests. And what we, uh, by the way, we just published a report on this issue. Uh, and we met basically everybody that matters uh, or relevant when it comes to this specific issue of famine and food insecurity in Somalia, including international organizations and the Somali government and people who are on, in the front line. So ba what we came to, to the conclusion at the time, which was just about three weeks ago, is that uh, the data is not there yet uh, to, to, to conclude that uh, the thresholds, uh, the technical thresholds, the death, the excess death, the, the nutrition level, and the main uh, food insecurity are, are there, no question about it. 
uh, the uh, so what what is needed to be done is that instead of just waiting uh, one or two specific points here and there, uh, that uh, the government and the international community must uh, must act immediately and, and call this emergency as an emergency and mobilize local resources. So basically, uh, no, no one is saying that people are not dying. People are dying in, in, in numbers. Uh, so let's not just focus on the technical part of it, and let's do what we can in order to uh, help uh, rescue the people who are facing the problem. Mm. Uh, I think we shouldn't be just focusing too much on debating the technicalities here. Sure. Well, on that technicality, I want to bring Guhad in here because we were just describing the criteria there deemed to which you need to deem a situation of famine. And notably, it's based on how many people are dying. I know that's been an issue of contention in the past. Uh, Guhad, how useful is a threshold like that? I know for many of our viewers, it feels like a very unnatural kind of distinction. Thank you very much. And I say uh, I welcome the other guest. And just to follow up what uh, Professor Elmo was saying is that um, of course, to declare farming is more political, as he put it. But uh, I tend to disagree and say that um, the, we are already on the threshold, if not even by, by passing it. Because when we say, uh, when we describe uh, or when farming has to be declared, the threshold that, that we might need to meet before farming is declared is like, um, for example, the number of deaths per 10,000, the level of malnutrition, the level of, of, of people who are in IPC5 or IPC4. And uh, of course, it is not in national wide statistics, it may not be the same. The level, of, uh, the, le the level of the crisis might not be the same. But still, we can, uh, I thought the government and uh, the international community, the donors, will have declared pockets of farming, like what happened in 2011. Because in one part of the country, we might be. We, we might be in a situation which is relatively manageable, but in the other part of the country, mm -hmm. we might be, again, mm -hmm. things might be going out of hand. And uh, it is very unfortunate that we tend to rush the last minute. Of course, the technicalities and the like is something that might be something different. But again, I think we have bypassed because mm -hmm. from late last year, we have been cautioning, we have been discussing the same. We have been warning the donors, the government, and the international community. And unfortunately, much of that has not been taken. But it is now that um, uh, most of the people are feeling agitated because the crisis is pulling the, the cupboard they are standing on. Well, let me bring in Hodan here. Um, Hodan, how does the government view this? Is there famine in parts of Somalia right now? Well, thanks for having me and hello to the uh, other guests. I agree. Um, I think there are a lot of difficulties in food insecurity across the country. One death is too many. Um, however, I think there's a lot of emphasis and, and time spent on technically defining uh, or declaring famine rather than being proactive and really engaging aggressively to address the issues of food insecurity across the country. Um, I do think the government has a right to not declare famine at this point of in time. As um, Afiara mentioned, the numbers are not there, simply, uh, though we are seeing, um, you know, a large number of people in, in very difficult circumstances and even some deaths in some parts of the country. What I would recommend, and, and really in terms of um, as someone who works for the government um, and, and really in Mogadishu, which is hosting the largest displacement and has one of the largest food insecurities, is that we as a government and international partners who have already raised hundreds of millions of dollars to actually ramp up efforts and target it target areas where there is um, a threat of famine. Um, the government, uh, when the president took uh, uh, office uh, back in, in, in May, um, appointed uh, an envoy for the humanitarian crisis that's happening across the country. That envoy has successfully really lobbied internationally and raised a lot of money for the international community to respond in Somalia to prevent famine. So I think the efforts of just having 
a blanket declaration of famine is futile. It's not necessary at this point. The numbers are not there. But what we are encouraging is to really be more clear about how the international community, in partnership with the government, is going to effectively prevent from famine conditions materializing. Hold on, we'll get to funding in a minute. I, I do want to dig into that as well, but you've just said there that a declaration of famine would be futile. So let me throw that over to Afyare. I know a lot of people in both in aid agencies and the government are, are wary of the so-called F word because it does have very specific implications. What does a declaration of famine actually do? Well, I mean, uh, let me just uh, put it this way. Uh, there is a committee that's tasked to look at this, and they have the data now with their hand. And I'm, my, my, I'm told that they will release their report either on Monday, Tuesday, uh, this week. So basically, we will know whether we have passed that threshold or not, and 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 and, and what that is, what that means. If the data is there, the government cannot say much. They have to declare. The the, the 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 famine and that means a lot by the way if a government is not willing not or or, or or not capable of protecting its people it says a lot about its sovereignty so what what somali government can do is now that if the data is there if the committee concluded that there has been reached the threshold it has to lead it has to announce uh, the famine, and it has to lead the process. And that actually will, will boost its image internationally, will make them more responsible, uh, rather than just insisting on technicalities here and there. Sure. So basically, that's what my position, when, when it comes to I declaring or not declaring, I hope is clarified on this. Uh, what, sorry, sorry. What it I, means... I, I do want to ask uh, all of you about this, because uh, it was my understanding that UN agencies and the government together do have some leeway and some latitude in terms of deciding whether or not to declare a famine. Guhad, I know you've been working on, on some, well, with lots of people who work on these famine review committees. Uh, in your mind, how much scope does the government actually have to decide whether or not to declare a famine? Because there has to be some kind of political consensus too. In the last 30 years, the date, the Somali data was not in the hand of the government, was in the hand of international community. And uh, sometimes most of this uh, data, not only the crude data that you collect on the ground, but it has to be time series analysis and where a lot of things has to be factored in. And most of this information and data is in the hands of, uh, of international actors like uh, the gospel. Now the humanitarian gospel is FSNAU and the FUSNET data, and that is not in the government hand. But having said that, the government in the last five, 10 to five years has been building on uh, it is capacity in terms of uh, getting access to such a data and trying to understand how to make decisions based on the available uh, information. Yes, I agree with the Dr. Professor Aviare that um, uh, it is the responsibility of the government to protect its population and from such a crisis. But it is very unfortunate that uh, people started dying of the crisis as early as May, June, July, August, the data just accumulating, seeing it, and drought is not a slow onset. It's not, a, it's not, a, it's not an earthquake. It's not a bomb blast. It is, it's a process. It's not one event. It is a process. Mm -hmm. And we have been seeing this, and the government have been following this. But the unfortunate part of it is that uh, the will, the, the will of the government is so low that it is giving more strength to political bickering here and there while people are suffering. Yes, there are people who, there are the committees who work on this. Uh, hold on, I'm, I'm going to let you come in there to respond because we just heard the, the president speak and, and he described a risk. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Guhad, we will come back to you because I, I want to give Horana an opportunity to respond to what you've just said. Uh, the, the president describing this it's risk really... in some areas to declare famine, what, what does he actually mean by that? Well, I think I want to maybe uh, comment on the government's will to declare. I think the government is willing to do what it takes to take care of its citizens and to be responsive to what's on the ground. In terms of numbers and data, we've had contentious relationship with the UN in terms of numbers and the numbers that it collects in Somalia. 
in recent years, there has been inflated numbers. And this is the reason why the government, as the government begins to strengthen its ability to actually function like a government, um, and the business of declaring um, whether famine or drought and all of that is being questioned on matters of technicality. I think the international community resorts to um, stating that the government is not willing or, or, or is busy with political bickering. I think that's a false uh, uh, narrative that, that the Somali government government is not um, neglecting its duties, but really being cautious around what this means long term. At the moment, right now, the numbers are not there. Are there pockets of uh, uh, places in the country where, yes, severe food insecurity is real and that we do need to respond? Yes. But does that mean a, a, a blanket uh, a famine needs to be declared? I don't think so. I think the support in, in, in the finances are there. I, my question is, why are we not seeing increased response in those pockets of areas where we can actually target and, and improve conditions? Um, as far as what the statement of the president has said is, yes, there is the risk of famine, and this is why we need to continue advocating to uh, increase resources and activities in Hold these on, areas. Sorry, sorry just to come in there. Sorry, that, that's not what the president said. The president said declaring famine in specific areas was risky. And I think a lot of people watching would assume that a declaration of famine means more attention and more aid. So what are the cons here? Absolutely. What's the downside? So, uh, there is a risk of, there is a risk of declaring in? famine, which means it interferes with Somalia's development and projected uh, uh, agenda uh, for the next four years. That doesn't mean that the government doesn't recognize there is an urgency. The president does recognize there's an urgency. There is an entire uh, envoy that has been, at the request of the international community, appointed. Massive money has been uh, uh, collected. Why are we not seeing more engagements on the ground and using the funds that have already been allocated, rather than continuously looking to ramp up attention? Okay. but we're not actually meeting the demand. I think that's yeah, where the question is. Afiare, I, I know you want to come in here. Yeah. Sorry, and you haven't had a chance to speak recently. Afiare, share your thoughts yeah, with us. And can, I can I just say uh, quickly that when it comes to the F word or the famine word, most of the governments in the region don't like it. And in fact, they have been uh, pressuring the international community not to use it. And it's not just Somalia, it's South Sudan, it's Ethiopia, it's others. They really don't like it simply because of what it connotates. Some countries even like, I mean, a, a government might fall or a, a big crisis might happen. So that's one of the main reasons is that governments don't like it. When we talk to Somali officials, they raised three concerns. One was the data. Uh, they're saying that there is still uh, not region. The other one was they might lose the coordination capacity of the whole uh, area. And the third one was that uh, the, relief, the money that is tasked for development might be reversed or just rerouted to the uh, relief. So these were the concerns they expressed to us. All of them, uh, maybe with the data on the side, are not founded. Uh, I think the government can be critiqued in this area by, 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 by coming more forcefully at least, even if it's not declaring the famine, the president needs to come out and he needs to say the, the, the level of emergency here. The excess death is way too many. Uh, the, the, the food insecurity, by the way, even the small rain is that has just started, might even complicate or even add to the deaths with the diarrhea and others that might result in. Also, uh, I mean, the, 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 the food, a lot of the food is just sitting in the ports and in Mogadishu. <laughs> And, and what the main president needs to do is to use these Amazon forces and others to distribute the food. It's about 240 kilometers from Mogadishu where these crises are taking place. And, and by the way, just to go back to 1991, where the international community, particularly the United States, had to send thousands of people to distribute food. So now it's really a criminal in a sense to have so many people uh, uh, so many troops and, and so many food available just a few hundred kilometers away are not being distributed uh, it, timely. Of course, there is all kinds of uh, security problems. I think this is the leadership that the government needs to show. A lot of this is about reputation and, and perceptions of what the government is doing. So, Guhad, let me ask you, you're, you're sitting in Mogadishu. How do Somalis on the street there feel about it? Is there a political consensus amongst the public that, that more needs to be done? Well, 
And uh, I think um, the issue of uh, uh, the government now saying that if we declare farming, for example, the resources allocated for development might be, a, might be a diverted to humanitarian. I think when people are in crisis, the first thing that the government should have thought of, and I really disagree with my colleagues, that uh, the first thing that the, the government should have thought of is maybe stopping the development and uh, saving people's lives. I think that, is, that should have been priority for a, for a reasonable government. And uh, the other thing is that, um, yes, people are seeing, are seeing that the people are dying because of the drought. The government is there. Of course, there are challenges. There is the security challenge. There is the access challenge. There is resource uh, mobilization uh, challenge. And all these challenges being there, and people talk about what is happening that people are dying of hunger, dying of thirst, and yes, the government is not capable, to, uh, capable of reaching it, but when it declares farming, it is like reaching by, it is calling for other people to come and assist. Mm -hmm. Now, the two things that does not marry here is that the government, the government capacity in terms of responding to the crisis, even if it is in partnership with international actors, is limited as for now. But if it declares farming, more resources, more human capital and the like will come in in terms of responding to the crisis. Now, if the government say that we cannot declare farming in pockets of the country, for example, that happened in 2011. Mm -hmm. That happened in 1992. Now, why? Is it that when there was no government that happened and the response that was made by the Somalis themselves, the international community saved the life? Why is it that now that we have effective government, it is now sitting on the decision? I can't understand that. Hold on, I, I think Unless this is a good time to, to bring you in here to hear a government perspective. I I'm sorry, that. Guhad. Um, Hold on, in 2011, Guhad was just saying there, obviously, literally a quarter of a million people died in Somalia in 2011. I, I was there myself watching it unfold. I, I was on the ground reporting. And I recall that actually when famine was declared, literally more than half of those deaths had already taken place. So my question then to you is, is why wait? Guhad is saying that there's an emergency situation, that, that, that emergency relief needs to be prioritized over long-term development. And you've, you, you yourself have mentioned that there's enough resources there, but I understand that only, what, 43% of the humanitarian response plan for this year has actually been funded? Um, I think I, I was here in 2011 when the famine declaration was going on and I saw the, the massive uh, deaths that has been happening. Uh, luckily, this is not the case now. Um, I think there is a misrepresentation of the severity of where we are today. I think there needs to be more focus on preventative measures rather than focusing on technicalities on where Somalia is today. Um, I mean, I am in Mogadishu. I agree with um, Afiare when he says, why are we not distributing what we already have? Nearly a half a million people are extremely food insecure, maybe about 10, 20 kilometers from where I am within uh, uh, Mogadishu borders. I think that we need to have an honest conversation in terms of what the intentions are of this, the declaration of famine. I mean, obviously, uh, at the moment, we don't meet the criteria, but I do have our colleagues who are pushing the declaration just to meet the international standards to actually increase uh, in fundraise off the backs of Somalis. I think that's not what the government wants. The government has done what it needs to do. Does there need to be more work needs to be done? And the president may be ramping up the, the rhetoric on delivery, coordination, releasing what's already there. I think there's a laxity within the international community in how they're responding to this crisis. There is a wait, watch and wait uh, uh, phenomenon that's going on right now. And I think I, I will push it back to the international partners who hold the largest purse in Somalia when it comes to humanitarian uh, aid needs to start actually activating its systems and releasing the funds that have been declared. The United States alone gave nearly a billion dollars to Somalia on humanitarian response. We're not seeing that level of response on the ground. So I really do caution 
our partners to mm -hmm. throwing back the jabs at the government in terms of the government is, is, is not responding. I think the government is responding. Do we need to do more? Obviously, I mean, that's what uh, uh, the crisis uh, calls for. But I really do think we are sort of sidestepping the real issue, which is why are we not acting now in terms of responding to those in crisis? And I, I think hold on, that, that everyone is calling for as much action as possible yeah. and as soon as possible. I'm afraid we'll have to leave our discussion today there. Um, thank you, though, to our guests, Guhara Dan, Afiare Elmi, and Hodan Ali. And thank you, too, for watching. You can see this program again anytime by visiting our website, that's aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, do go to our Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. We are at AJ Inside Story. From me, Nastasia Tay, and the whole team here in Doha, bye for now.